free. Oh, God, I thank you, oh, Lord. Thank you for your mighty mercies this morning, God. Lord, we lift your name up to heaven this morning, God. You are worthy. Come on, church, don't stop. God is here today. He's going to do what he's going to do. He always will. He will show up and he will show out. I speak healing in this place this morning. I speak deliverance in this place this morning. God, we thank you, Lord. Come on, church, as we worship, let's worship in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name.
gifts you got I'll sing of all you've done Death is swallowed up forever By the fury of your love Cause you stepped into my ear You took me by the hand You marched me out in freedom Into the promised land Now I will not forget you
get ready. Um, I want to take a minute. You know, the Bible teaches us give credit where credit's due, so I have to give a shout out to this two front row of young people right here. Uh, came Friday night, Saturday night, helped make over 2,000 bonbons. We sold a hundred and something dozen, so that's a little over a thousand dollars profit into our, our youth account for our trips. So I also want to give a shout out to my mom. She came last night and helped. My mother in law, who obviously is not here, she came Friday night and helped. Sister Churchill came last night and helped. Brother Churchill supported us with pizza last night, so I wanna say thanks to him. If you ordered bonbons, some of them are downstairs. Some of them we had so many we had to send home with the youth. So if you ordered from a youth member, please get with them after service and make arrangements to get those picked up. Like I said, some of them are downstairs. If you ordered from one of my children, they are here. So if you would, just uh, say our prayer declaration together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, world royalties received my whole family saved and walking with God perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing I'm blessed going in I'm blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus name Amen.
gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, church, let's lift up our hands. have the victory in Jesus' name. He took what the enemy meant for evil, and he turned it for good. There's no battle that he can't overcome. He has authority over everything that may ever affect us or harm us. In the name of Jesus. Right now, I pray that you will... Uh, let's pray together, and let's bring up these needs, and uh, bring them together in unity. Um, let's pray for uh, Sister Whitley and Brother Pruitt. Um, pray for John Hawes' back. Let's pray for uh, Jim Ballou uh, and his salvation, and Chris Osborne um, and Elaine's family and the lost ones. So if you would, let's lift up our hands, lift up our voices, and let's pray to God. Let's pray for these needs. In the name of Jesus, right now I pray, God, for your will to be done in this church, Lord. Upon these families, God, and upon this congregation, Lord, I pray that you will pour out your anointing upon us, God. Lord, bless us, God, and help us, Lord, with every need in our lives. Father, right now I pray over Sister Whitley, God, that you will bless over her and her body and whatever the need is, God. Let your will be done. I pray over Brother Pruitt, that you will bless over him, Lord, and let there be a healing, God. I pray over John Hawes and his back, that you will heal him of any pain, of any discomfort. I pray for Jim Ballow and his salvation, God, that you will let his family members be a light to him, Lord, and let them be a witness to him. Father, I pray over Chris Osborne and Elaine's family, God, and any prodigals in that family, any lost ones, Lord, that you will let somebody in that family be a light to them, God, and let them be a witness, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray for your will to be done upon us, God, and every unspoken request, Lord, I pray for your will to be done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He is my faithful Calling me out of the dark And I cannot whisper away what he said in the light He is my firm foundation My anchor won't be moved Storms may collide but my soul is on fire with his word or the first verse again this morning right before service I was sitting there and I felt to open my Bible and I just opened it up and it came to Jonah and the part that uh, that stuck out to me was Jonah's prayer he says I called out to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me out of the belly of I don't know how to pronounce that word I cried and you heard my voice for you cast me into the deep into the heart of the seas and the flood surrounded me all your waves and your billows passed over me and then I said I'm driven away from your sight and yet I shall look upon your holy temple the waters closed in over me to take my life the deep surrounded me weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever yet you brought up my life from the pit O oh Lord my God 
and when my life was fainting away I remember the Lord and my prayer came to you and into your holy temple you look at the words to the first verse and it says he's my faithful father calling me out of the dark and I cannot whisper away what he said in the light when I read this this verse a certain person came to mind someone who thinks that they're that they've gone too far and that they're a lost cause and I felt this text this person this morning and sorry I'm not prepared when I read this verse when I read this scripture when he talks about I said I called out to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me out of the belly of I cried and you heard my voice for you cast me into the deep into the heart of the sea and the flood surrounded me all your waves and your billows passed over me and then it said and I'm driven away from your sight yet I shall I shall again look upon your holy temple it talks about how we get in really dark places sometimes Sometimes we allow the world to kind of just bury us and it feels hopeless and like nothing is ever going to go right and how it just, this song talks about how he's faithful and how no matter how dark it gets, night cannot whisper away what he said in the light. It doesn't have any power over what he's already said. When you feel hopeless and you feel worthless, that's not of God. That's not what he's saying. It says, when listen to the sound of power on my lips, because Jesus has broken the curse and he's never lost a battle. So if you're still battling, he's still working. It's not over. If it's, if it's dark, it's not over. So we're going to go back into that first verse. And I just want you to really think about the words. Think about how, because it says, Who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow low? They have no power. It has no power over God. He gets the last say in everything. So we're going to go back into it, and I really want you to really listen and really focus on those words and what they mean to you and what it means to your situation and whatever it is that you're facing. I want you to recognize that this song's a promise. He's never lost a battle and he never will. He is my faithful father calling me out of the dark. And I cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my
defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. 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 Oh, he never will, he never will. When listen to the sound of power on my lips, Jesus has broken the curse. With the one 
I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease This is my victory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle With the one who has conquered it all When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Who are you to him this morning? <laughs> You're worthy. Amen. You're worthy this morning. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the presence of the Almighty today. Amen. What a wonderful presence I feel here in this place. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Wow. Hmm. What a presence here. Amen. This morning I feel that the Lord has laid something on my heart. Amen. For this church. Uh, what I'm preaching on this morning has been in my mind since the beginning of this year. Amen. I feel under the unction of the Holy Ghost that if we can truly understand what this means and apply it to our lives. Amen. I believe that we will see the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost that this church has ever seen. And I'm not just talking about revival, but I'm talking about spiritual signs, miracles, and wonders. Amen. I believe it's up to the church, amen, to continue what God has, amen, for this community. I believe that this church here can usher in a revival in this city, amen, but it takes him, amen, our chief cornerstone, the head of the church, amen, to be able to operate within these four walls. Amen, amen. What a blessing it is to be here this morning. Someone high-five your neighbor and say, I'm ready for the word. Amen. 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 Brother Wells almost preached my message this morning. Amen. <laughs> I was giving my wife the scriptures that I will be speaking on. And, and it's kind of the same way. We have some of the same scripture, but we're, we're kind of on the same page as far as what we're preaching on today. Amen. First Samuel 17. I'm just going to read one verse because I'm going to read it quite a bit this morning. Amen. What a fitting song to, to just usher right into this. Amen. Talking about giants. Amen. First Samuel 17, it says, And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented themselves 40 
days. Everyone say 40 days. 40 days. The Amplified Version says this, Then the Philistine, Goliath, came out morning and evening and took his stand for 40 days. Amen. I want to preach on this topic this morning. Just a simple but yet powerful word, dominion. Amen. Can we pray this morning for the anointing of God to be in this place? Lord, we love you. We're thankful for what we feel in this place. Lord, we ask that you anoint God, anoint this, this broken vessel, God, these, these lips of clay, that you mold them today. Lord, let your word go forth, let it pierce the hearts of the congregation. Lord, move today in this house, God. Have freedom and liberty in here today. Lord, allow your presence to be manifested in this house, your anointing, your power, God. You are majesty, Lord. You are the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Lord, we ask that you just have your way in this house today, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you may be seated. Uh, amen, amen, amen. It's fitting that pastor taught about standing the line this morning. Amen. And here in 1 Samuel 17, it says the Philistine Goliath came out morning and evening and took his stand. Amen. We must be careful on what line we're standing on and who is standing on our line today. The very familiar scripture of David and Goliath, I'm going to read through most of it here this morning. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle, and they gathered there at Soko, or Soko and, and belongs to Judah. They encamped between Soko and Ezka and the Ephes of, I ain't going to say that one, and Saul and the men of Israel gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elon and drew up a battle a battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. Amen. You can kind of picture what is happening here. There's a line of forces over here, and there's a line of forces on this side. Amen. And there was a valley in between them. And a champion went out from a camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits, and a span. He has bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of nail, and his weight of the coat was five. 5,000 shekels of bronze and he had a bronze armor in his legs and a brown, bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of the spear was like a weaver's beam. His, his, his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and the shield bearer went before him. Everyone say he was big. big. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor said he's big, 6 foot 3, a little under 300 pounds, give or take. Amen. I, mean, I can't imagine walking up to this behemoth of a human being. Amen. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel. And he said to them, Why have you come out to line up for this battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all his army heard these words from the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was a son of the Ephraim in the Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, who had eight sons. And the, the man was old and advanced in years in those days of Saul. And the three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul into battle. And the names of the sons went into battle. Eliab, the firstborn, and Abinadab, the second, and Shammah, the third. David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to see, feed his father's sheep as Bethlehem and the Philistine drew near and presented himself for 40 days amen and took a stand amen in this passage in scripture we can clearly and without question that Goliath and the Philistine army had complete control over the situation Amen. Goliath and his army had total control of the battle that was being waged. The scripture states that when the Philistine came out to challenge the Israel army, that Saul and his troops were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now let me put this into a little bit of perspective this morning. Saul and his army were a very dominant force. Amen. They have won many victories. They were not defeated as of yet. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 11, Saul delivered 
delivered the people of Jabesh from the Ammonites. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, Jonathan killed the Philistine governor at Gibeah, and the Philistine garrison was driven out. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, the Philistines were defeated by Jonathan and Saul. And in chapter 15, Saul's forces defeated the Amalekites. Amen. It wasn't like the army of Israel struggled. Amen. It wasn't like they weren't defeating everyone they were coming in contact with. Amen. Before Goliath came storming into the scene. It is amazing how quick the enemy came in and took dominion over the Israelite army. It seems like such a short period of time between being victorious and being defeated. From being victorious to being dismayed and afraid. Just like you and I today, we must be careful on what our enemy is doing because in an instant, in a moment of time, we can lose our dominion with our walk with God. The saying is true, if you give the devil an inch, he will become your ruler. Amen. It wasn't until the enemy defied the armies of the living God that the Israelites began and, be, and, be, and they were afraid of the enemy. We must be careful what we allow the enemy to speak into our lives. Amen. We must be careful on what the enemy speaks and what we allow him to say in our lives because just like the Israelites, we can too become scared and lose our dominion, amen, to the enemy. Yes, amen, when the enemy speaks things like, you are not good enough, you're never going to be able to reach your calling in God. You're never going to see your family saved. Amen. You're never going to do what God wants you to do. What you're doing is in vain and it's for nothing. God isn't going to use you because of your past. You are not good enough to be standing here today. What are you doing in the house of the Lord? Amen. But you must be careful because he will take dominion over your mind in just an instant. Amen. There must be something inside of us that says, devil, devil, you have no place and rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Jesus thought you were worthy this morning as he hung on the cross and died for you. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. You are precious, amen, to the king. You are precious and peculiar people, amen. God sought for you today. Amen. Jesus taught you are worthy enough to take the sins that you and I contain and take him to a grave with him. Amen. Jesus taught you are worthy enough that he laid down his life for you and I. Amen. That he humbled himself as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Over all power he owned. Everything he had was because of him. Everything we have. He humbled himself. Amen. Because of you. I mean, you are worthy today. I want to look at your neighbor and say, you are worthy. God sees that you're worthy. God sees that you have an anointing. God sees that you have a calling. God sees you have a purpose, amen. God sees you have a reason to be in the house of the Lord. You are not here today just because you felt like coming to church, but God has a calling in your life. You have an anointing upon your head. God has a purpose for your kingdom. Amen. Jesus came to dwell with us that we make make heaven our home. He thought you were worthy. Amen. That he made a way for us to make eternity our home. <laughs> Who am I this morning to stand here and think of anything otherwise? I can't give God enough praise for what he has done in my life. I can't give him enough honor for him dragging me out of my pit of despair and sin and, and put me where I am today, amen. Amen, can we magnify him in this place? Amen. We must rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we magnify him in here? Can I tell you where there's praise, there's no enemy. When there is praise, there's no devil. When there is praise, there is nothing that can stop a child of the king. <laughs> amen, amen. Hallelujah, dominion. Amen. So here we are again, back in the book. The army is scared and don't know what to do. Obviously, they were hiding. They were terribly afraid. And David sent to give his brothers some food. And David was there 
was there when the giant came out and spoke the same words that he's been saying for 40 days. Can I say this real quick? The enemy will keep dominion over you as long as you allow him to. For 40 days, he had dominion over the Israelite army. He came out every morning and every night and declared to the, that he, was, he had power over them. They were scared for 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. We must be quick to stop the enemy from speaking over our lives. Amen. David was upset that nothing was being done about this Philistine. In 1 Samuel 17 and 31, it says, Now when the words of David which spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no more hearts fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth. He, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep the sheep, his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and I struck it and I delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught it by its beard and I struck it and I killed it. Your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing as he defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and go and let the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David in his armor and he put on the bronze helmet on his head and he clothed him with a great coat of mail and David fastened his sword to his armor and he tried to walk for he had not tested him. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk in these for I have not tested him. So David took him off. Saul thought Goliath was too big to fight. <laughs> David thought Goliath was too big to miss. David, we must have a perspective, amen, about the enemy that we're fighting when you realize that you are a child of the king when you realize that God has given you power over all of the enemy when you realize that Jesus has imparted you with power when you receive the Holy Ghost that you have dominion over all the enemy and that you can overcome every situation <laughs> let me say that again I believe listen to this real quick I believe the reason why David didn't use that armor is because he was the armor of man. Let me say that again. The reason why David didn't use Saul's armor because it was the armor of man and not of God. David's confidence and faith was not in man, but it was with the king of kings and the lord of lords. David didn't need the armor of man to defeat the lion. David didn't need the armor of man to defeat the bear. He knew that if God was with him, God was going to protect him. Hallelujah. when we realize that we don't need the world to protect us but we have the king of kings and the lord of lords to protect us amen when we walk in dominion we will walk in the protection of the lord david was victorious battle after battle because the lord was with him every went and david could not be defeated we need to pray that we are equipped with the armor of god each and every day amen the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth the shoes of the gospel the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit God equip us today with your armor amen come on church can we have that armor equipped on us I don't know how we're standing here today without it it is only because of the grace of God amen but every time we walk out of these doors amen we better be equipped of God and not of this world we better be equipped with the things of God and not of this world because the word will fail you the world's armor will drag you down but the armor that the Lord gives is, is stronger than anything that the enemy has and can come against you. Hallelujah. Hope I can finish this because my voice is failing me quickly. First Samuel 17 and verse 40. He said he took the staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. 
And he put them in the shepherd's bag and a pouch which he had, and a sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David. And a man who bore the shield went before him, and, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. At least he was good-looking. <laughs> At least the Philistine noticed that. Lord, let my enemies know I'm good-looking today. <laughs> Amen, for he was only ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Amen. The enemy will never stop. The enemy will try to belittle you, amen, in your ministry and your callings today. Young people, I pray every morning for you that God will move in your callings, in your future ministries, your future calls in your life. Because I, I believe that the revival is not only from us, but from these young people, amen. <laughs> Are you a dog? Am I a dog? Amen. He said, come to me. And I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And David said to this Philistine, You come with me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. The time has come where David has had enough of the dominion that the enemy has had over Israel. We need to come to our senses this morning. And take back the dominion that the enemy has taken from us. Amen. Someone needs to tell the enemy this morning. I don't care what you came with today. I don't care what you have to say about me. I don't care what weapon you have aimed at me. I come against you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And today you will be defeated. Can we declare that right now in the name of Jesus? Jesus, take back our dominion over over our lives right now. It's time to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. Oh, where is your joy this morning? Oh, where is your dance this morning? Oh, where is your shout this morning? Oh, where is your battle cry this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> My favorite part of the story is in verse 48. And so it was. <laughs> Here we go. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David hurried, and he ran to the army to meet the Philistine. David was ready to get back what the enemy had stolen. <laughs> we need to be as David and get an urgency within us to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. Amen. There's got to be something inside of us that says, That's enough, devil. I'm taking back what you stole. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I've been reading a book. I finished it. It's an amazing book by Charles Robinette called The Radically Apostolic. And there's a story in there that he talked about a demonic spirit. And I would like to share it with you today. And when I first read this story, I felt the Holy Ghost stronger in my house than I have ever felt. And I was sitting in my recliner. Amen. Don't tell me God can't move on recliners. <laughs> Amen. Brother Robinette said this. He said, in 2003, I was invited by a dear friend, missionary Joe Cooney, to, a minister, to minister in Dublin. When Brother Cooney dropped me off at the hotel, I collected my key from the desk and proceeded to my assigned room. And when I opened the door to the hotel room and walked inside, fear instantly gripped my heart. The hairs on my arms and on my back of my neck stood up straight. Someone or something was in my room waiting on me. When I turned on the light, a demonic spirit was standing in bed. Although it was wearing apparel that can only be described as utterly black, its face was visible and filled with rage. Without touching the floor, the demonic spirit moved across the floor and physically pushed me against the wall. With a voice full of pure venom and hate, the spirit snarled, I am the prince of this city, and you are nothing. I was here before you, and I will be here after you. If you don't leave now, I will kill you. Amen. While I started, while I stared at the demonic spirit in the eyes, something quickened inside of me. I began to pray in the authoritative 
Holy Ghost tongue, radical prayer. The grip of the demonic spirit upon my chest began to loosen. I can see in the eyes of that spirit that whatever authority it was trying to convince me it possessed over me, it was a false authority and it was beginning to waver. An inferno of righteous indignation exploded with me and I shouted in the face of that demonic spirit, you may have been here before me, but I know someone who was here before you. <laughs> yes. he said I proceeded to quote in John 1 and through 5 and 14 he says boldly with the authority against the demonic spirit he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him not, that, not anything was made that was made in him was life and, in, and the life was a light of men and the light of shyness and darkness and the darkness comprehended it not and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten the father full of grace and truth and the demonic spirit began to tremble with fear it released a grip on my chest and started bouncing like a pinball in a room and shot out the window and I tell you this morning once we realize what kind of power that we possess there is not a devil in hell that can stop you from pursuing his kingdom there's not a devil in hell that can stop you from doing God's calling in your life there's not a devil in hell that can hinder the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. <laughs> Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on servants and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen, I declare to you this morning, there's not a devil in hell that can stop you. There's not a devil in hell that can hinder you. Amen. Amen. You must claim that dominion in your life. Romans 8 and 31, What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? In Matthew 18, 18 through 20, it says, Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two or three on earth are concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Can I tell you today, there was more than two or three gathered here. Verse 20 says, For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Can I tell you, that God is here and the devil is not. Amen. Can I tell you dominion is here and the devil is not. Amen. It is time that the church stands up and be what they're called to be. Do what they're supposed to do in the name of Jesus. Matthew 16 and 19 and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind on earth it will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth it will be loosed on heaven God has given us some authority amen in our dominion we were able to loose things in our lives we were able to bound things in our life amen you can bind the enemy up and you can lose some strongholds amen those family members that are lost amen you have dominion you have authority to loose the bonds and have them bound the word says if they're loose here it'll be loose in heaven amen we must realize who we are today hallelujah I'm coming too close <laughs> there's something that I have felt heavily in my spirit amen and I want to share with you <sighs> in the story of the prodigal son we all know it very well. It's been spoken a lot of here lately. Amen. And I, I believe in that story. There's a lot of truth to it. Amen. I believe that the prodigals are going to return. Amen. There are times in our life that we have been praying for something and seeking God to intervene in our situation. Amen. We seek. We seek. We pray. Amen. We pray. We fast. Let me ask you a question today. How would you react if you seen your miracle come to pass? Huh? Sister Marilyn, how would you react if God healed your legs today? <laughs> Amen. 
How would you act if you seen your miracle right in front of you? I believe that the reason that the prodigal father was so excited to see his son was because he's been praying and fasting and seeking God for his son's return. The reason why I say this, because if it was one of my own sons, you better believe that I would be seeking God on his behalf. <laughs> I would be seeking God. There would be no stopping me until he was back. And Luke 15 and 20 says, And he arose and came to his father, but he was still a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. It was no wonder he ran afar off to meet him. It was no wonder that he celebrated like he did because his miracle has came to pass. Let me tell you something this morning. We better be praying and fasting for backsliders. We need to be praying dominion over these lost souls because the enemy has held them captive. The enemy is speaking into their lives. They're not good enough. Hey Amen. You ain't good enough for the house of the Lord. The church will fail you. God has left you. The enemy has dominion over them. <laughs> but the word says what we loose on earth, he looses in heaven. And what we bind on earth, He binds in heaven. God has given you the authority, the dominion to cast the enemy out of the lost people that have walked from this church. We must take back what the enemy has stolen from us. We must push back the darkness of this city. We must push back the darkness in our families. We must run and fight and defeat this enemy because if God is for us, who can be against us? <laughs> I'm coming to a close. I'm fixing to have an altar call. Now this here, I see this every service and God convicted me of this. I'm, I, this was my idea, if you remember. I, I preached a message, and I had each and every one of you come up and put lost souls in here. People that, are, that need to come back home. Amen. And God spoke to me, don't put my blessings in a jar. <laughs> don't, 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 don't captive, don't, don't put my miracles in a box. So today, as we close... I'm going to do something. I don't want one of these names left on this altar. Because this time we pull these miracles out of this box. And I want you to grab. I don't want you to pick through. I don't want you to just grab somebody you know. But I want you to grab one of these cards. And what you're going to start doing, you're going to start praying dominion over these people. You're going to start asking God to, to, to bring them back, to, to, to break the bonds, to, to lose the chains in their lives, to bind the enemy. That's what you're going to do today. <laughs> so I'm going to come up here. I'm going to spread these out. <laughs> these don't need to be belong in a box, but they need to be on the altar. I mean, every day I walk by and I see this. I, I see these papers and I'm like, God, you haven't done anything. But God said, you haven't done anything. There's a lot of names up here, church. <laughs> it's time for the church to be what we're called to be. <laughs> if you stand with me, amen. It's time to be the church. Look at all this. These are lost loved ones of people in this church. Not in our, this is our community. This is our people, people we love. We know these people. So as we come to a close, I want each and every one of you, if you're willing, I, if you're not going to pray for these people, don't come up here. <laughs> if, if you're not going to intervene, don't come up here today. But if there is something inside of you, that wants to see a revival in prodigals, come grab a name and start interceding for these people. 
Amen. You may not know who they are. You may. It doesn't matter. But allow God, there better not be a name left on this platform. <laughs> Hallelujah. Grab two or three. Grab five or ten. Hallelujah. And I don't want this just to be a one-time deal. I want you to take these home. And I want you every day to pray over these people, to pray dominion, to pray authority, to pray deliverance, to bind the bonds of wickedness in their lives, to break the chains that have them bound today. I mean, there's still some more up here. There's still some more names up here. Come on, church. Are they not worth it? <laughs> Are they not worth it today? Are they not worth it today? I mean, your name could be on this platform. You could be one of those, but God has given you grace. Ha. <laughs> Come on, there's about five left. Come on, church. <laughs> oh, let there be a travail in this place right now. Let there be a travail. <laughs> let dominion be manifested. It is time we take back what the enemy has stolen from us. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, come on, church. Let us pray. Let us seek God for miracles. Let us seek God for dominion oh, over these lost loved ones. Let there be dominion present in their life. Let's bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Let's loosen them today in the name of Jesus. Let us pray, church. There's not a problem. Doesn't know about. And before he allows you to go in, he's already made a way for you to come out. Everything that you go through, there's a purpose and a plan.
Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Brother Payne. Hallelujah. The four or five papers I, re I picked up are of all people that I have worshipped with at one time. I have seen filled with the Holy Ghost, but are no longer living their life for God. Casualties, if you will, prodigals, yes. Amen. Words, some, some, some of which I have spoken with and had conversations, but nothing I could say or do could convince them. Amen. And that's why this is nothing that we, we can't fix. The, I, 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 can't, I can't fix these people. Amen. But you and I this morning serve a God that, amen, is able. And so my, my energy and my, my focus is not what, what is it that I can do, but God, you're, you're going to do it. I want to be positioned with you, God. Amen. Maybe I'll never speak a word to these people. Maybe I'll never lay my hands on them to pray. But I believe there is a realm in the spirit in which that God can use you and me as maybe to intercede in prayer and consecrate to him that God in his own mysterious way is able to speak into their hearts, to their minds, to lead them back, amen, to the Father's house. Dominion, complete authority is given Amen. Not by not to those that because we're so qualified or because we're so this or that. David wasn't the most likely candidate to go against the giant, the champion. Amen. It wasn't his physical strength. It wasn't his experience. But it was his dependency upon the one that can do all things. And so this morning, I, I want to commit myself even more. God, I'm leaning on you, God. How many here recognize we need him? If we're going to make the impact and have the influence like, like we believe God wants to do, it's not going to be because of how good we are. It's all about him. But I, I, I want to get in with him. Amen. I want, to, I want to surround myself and submit myself to him. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 says, Don't you realize that you become the slave of of whatever you choose to obey. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. You, you truly do choose, amen, what has dominion in your life. Amen, praise God. I'm telling you, I wanna choose, amen, to be obedient to God. I'm convinced that he can do it all. I'm convinced he can handle my problems while handling your problems, amen, while the whole world's on his shoulders. He ain't, he ain't burdened, amen, he's not st strained. <laughs> Praise God, amen. Anybody ever been to a chiropractor before? Man, that's a weird experience, amen. Your health doctor, they tell you to stick out your tongue and they tell you what's, this one here, oh, man, go up and down your back and tell you, well, you've got this. And I'm like, how, how do you know all of that? And then he'll tie you in a knot and like body slam you. And there you go. You're better. Am I? <laughs> Am I better? Hey, man, my, my wife's done something to her back and she finally went back to the chiropractor and she came back the first time feeling, feeling worse than she did when she went. I'm thinking, is that really necessary? I asked her if he could maybe give an adjustment to her attitude. I don't know that he works in that realm or not. Amen. It's probably my attitude that needs adjusting more than that. The, the thing about it is what, what needs to be adjusted is within us. You can't see it with your eyes. Amen. It's it's in me. I, I, I know a lot of times that, well, man, if, 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 if my spouse would just be nicer. 
I'm telling you, it's not, it's not the external, it's the internal that needs to change. And God, I want to, when, when we submit ourselves to Him, we're, we're allowing Him to make the adjustments. And we may wonder, is that really working? Is that what, what He knows what He's doing, church? I, I mentioned it Wednesday night. We, January, we really, was our, our kind of our focus was submitting to God and getting in position with God and for God to do what He's going to do. And I, I do believe there's, we're in that transitional point where God's, God's going to start doing some things that's going to blow our minds, but we've got to remain in that place. We've got to remain submitted. Amen. Isn't it exciting what the Lord is doing? Can we one more time just lift our hands and thank Him today? He is wonderful. Lord, we thank You today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, You are mighty today. Jesus, in Your name today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul. Thank you, Brother Payne. Amen. We want to continue walking in dominion. Amen. Make sure you are consistent in your consecration. Uh, we're here every morning early. If you want to come and pray at 6, we're here between 5.30 and 6.30 every morning. Uh, amen. Fast. Push that plate away. All of that is so necessary, amen, as God is putting us where we need to be. Hallelujah. Tuesday prayer this week from noon to 8, amen. Our annual church business meeting, it's, we, it's our annual uh, business meeting. That will be Tuesday, February the 22nd, and that will be at 7 o'clock, of course, here in the sanctuary. Uh, the 27th of February, we will be having Freedom House. Amen. That, this is where uh, Cody Miller is right now. And, man, God's doing a great work in his life. Uh, they will be here that Sunday morning. And they're going to be sharing testimonies. And I think that would be just a great morning to see a lot of people get delivered. Amen. Praise God. So we will be looking forward to that. That's, again, the 27th of February on uh, our morning service at 11 o'clock. Camp meeting, our southeastern uh, district or area quadrant i guess you would say uh, march the 10th and the 11th that'll be at the black river coliseum and uh, our the main speaker will be brother woodward raymond woodward we were blessed to hear him at renew this week and man just uh wow pretty amazing uh stuff and so looking forward to that uh, as well all of you that bought bonbons thank you so much amen i don't think brother and sister halls will probably eat another oreo the rest of their life well, that's not true. They will too. Uh, but anyway, I, I, when they when they said, I, I asked Sister Halls, you, you got Orioles running out your ears? And I, I didn't, you know, she said we made 2,000 2, bonbons. And anyway, thank you so much. That was an amazing thing. They, uh, among all of that, they have three dozen white, uh, two dozen chocolate bonbons, and a dozen of the mix, they are still available. If you would like to purchase them, uh, see Brother Halls, and uh, amen, he can take care of that. But thank you so much for everyone that, that helped out, donated, worked, uh, amen. All of that, again, the Lord, he is good. God takes really good records. Everything you do, I promise you, God takes note of it, amen. And so we do it as unto the Lord, amen. amen. Praise God. Anything else this morning? We have no birthday. We have no birthday. Birthdays to sing. Oh, anyway, praise God. Lord, we love you. We thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We're thankful for your word today, God. Lord, it, it again, spoken clearly to us. And, Lord, the importance that we submit ourselves. And, God, stand in the gap. And, Lord, intercede for those. And you're giving us dominion. And, God, we, we're so grateful. We pray your blessings on every home and every family. God, as you will bless us and keep us, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You're dismissed in the wonderful name of the Lord today.